F-099 was released recently and I've been playing it a lot. It seemed fairly simple at first, but it quickly became an addiction for me. The super high-speed gameplay is exhilarating, and its punishing difficulty always keeps pushing me to get better. I've enjoyed this game so much that it's making me wonder why I've never dived into the F-Zero series before. I love racing games, futuristic aesthetics, and great music, all of which this franchise appears to have tons of. So I decided it was finally time for me to give F-Zero a go. And after playing every mainline game in the series, I want to share my thoughts on each of these amazing games. Now let's race into the fast and futuristic world of F-Zero games. Before making this video, my overall knowledge of F-Zero was pretty much like anyone else's. I knew Captain Falcon from Smash Bros, and enjoyed the special theme tracks in Mario Kart 8. I also really loved the F-Zero themed minigame from Nintendo Land. I was really interested in the franchise, but you know how it is. You intend on playing lots of games, but then years go by and you just kind of forget about it. But then F-Zero 99 was shadow dropped during the most recent Nintendo Direct, and I thought I'd give it a try. I've never been able to really get into any of the other 99 style games like Tetris or Pac-Man so I thought I'd play it for a bit and then drop it. But I ended up playing it a whole lot more than I thought I would, and it sparked this entire journey. I wanted to get a full understanding of this series, as obviously there's something here that I really enjoy. So I went back and played every game in order of release, and I'll be going over each game in the same order, beginning with the one that started it all, the original F-Zero on the SNES. I had tried to play this game a couple times before, but the controls felt slippery and frustrating to me. But after putting lots of hours into F-099, returning to the original felt a lot better. I now had a basic understanding of braking and sliding, which are essential if you don't want to bounce around the track losing health. After some practice, this game actually controls remarkably well for how old it is, and there's a really powerful sense of speed too. I'll try to avoid comparing F-Zero to Mario Kart for most of the video, but putting the two SNES entries side by side, it's pretty surprising just how much faster and more intense F-Zero feels. But somehow it also feels better to control too. It's incredibly satisfying to perfectly break and slide around a tight turn. Each of the four machines available control differently, and I think my favorite has to be Wild Goose because of its high durability. I find it really impressive how visually distinct each of the machines are. You can instantly tell which one is which from a glance, which is a testament to the very strong pixel art direction. Obviously the visuals are simplistic, but they still look really nice. Every course has a distinct and unique vibe, with fantastic music to go alongside the visuals. Basically every single song in this game is amazing, and zooming around at high speeds feels even cooler with these amazing tunes playing on top of everything. And then there's the sound design, which is super sharp and satisfying as well. The track designs are really solid, and it's super fun to memorize where each turn and jump are, and get closer and closer to the perfect lap. There isn't a ton of content in this game, Pretty much all you can do is race in Grand Prix or practice on a few select courses, but the core gameplay is so much fun to master that it's still very replayable. And there were also some extra Grand Prix add-ons released only in Japan that added some new machines and tracks, but I didn't play those for myself. This classic holds up very well, and I really enjoyed playing it. It's easy to see how this launched a franchise, as there are so many great ideas that could be expanded upon in future entries, which is exactly what happened. Fast forward about 7 years, and the next entry in the series, F-Zero X, was released on the Nintendo 64. Being a shiny new 3D graphics console, F-Zero got a whole new look and feel for the gameplay. The core aspects are the same, but controlling your machine in a 3D space feels a lot different. This game massively improved the amount of racers to choose from, with even more tracks to race on. Every single racer feels incredibly unique and interesting, and I love being able to see the pilots who are controlling the machines. These simple character portraits do so much to flesh out the world of F-Zero and I feel like this game is when the series really started to form its own identity. It feels like you're stepping into a lived-in universe full of characters with their own backstories and personalities. Like in the first game, every machine handles a little bit differently, but now you have so many options to choose from that it really feels like you can pick the machine that perfectly fits your playstyle. My favorite has to be the Red Gazelle. I just love its sleek red design and the robot pilot is super cool. 
Being the first racing game ever running at 60 frames per second, the graphics are even more simplistic than usual for the console to allow for the higher frame rate. But it's still a big jump up from the original, adding in giant loops and long tunnels that give you a terrific sense of scale. Jumps now send you flying up into the air, and you can control your machine as it goes flying downwards. The sense of speed is somehow even faster this time around. You're really just flying down the courses. It took me a while to get a handle on the controls, partly because of Switch Online's really weird control scheme for N64 games. It can also be a bit frustrating to play on courses for the first time, as corners and turns come up really fast and you have very little time to react. But what I learned over time is that the true gameplay loop of F-Zero is learning how to play best on each track, so of course you'll be bad at the beginning. It just makes it that much more satisfying when you finally hit every turn perfectly. One thing I love about this series as a whole is that when you need to slow down for a turn, you don't actually press a brake button, you just stop holding the acceleration button. It's a subtle thing, but it gives the machines a sense of momentum that makes the super high speeds feel more believable. In F-Zero X, each course only has you complete three laps, instead of the original's five. I really like this change, as it makes the gameplay feel more frantic and fast-paced, so if you don't boost right now, the race will be over and you'll lose. Speaking of boosting, it works a little differently now. Instead of getting one boost every lap like the first game, you can boost whenever you want, but it takes out a pretty sizable chunk of your health bar. But for the first lap of the race, no one gets to boost at all. I absolutely adore this gameplay mechanic, and I think it's the core aspect of this game that makes it so much fun. The first lap you focus on driving and steering, trying to hit boost pads and avoid hitting corners. But the second you pass the starting line to start lap 2, it turns to total boosting chaos. By forcing the first lap to be relatively calm, it makes the second and third laps feel way more fast and impactful. It's also a genius risk and reward system, where boosting gets you farther ahead, but risks you exploding and losing right then and there. Also, quick side note, I love how when you crash the screen just says, retire. I don't know if that's intended to be funny or not, but it got me laughing every time it happened. This game also has some fun side modes like time attack, death race, and a versus mode for local multiplayer. I spent most of my time in the Grand Prix mode, since that's where you can unlock new characters. But it's great they added more side content this time. Once again, the music is phenomenal, with this game making use of a more hard rock style of soundtrack that fits the high speed gameplay perfectly. Japan also got another extra side expansion that added in a track editor, which is pretty cool. But again, I didn't play that for myself. Overall, F-Zero X is a fantastic second entry for the series. For the amount of innovation and new ideas that are here, you'd think this would be the third or fourth game. I had a blast with this one, and I love everything it introduced. Maximum Velocity is the third mainline entry in the F-Zero series, and it's a return to the more classic 2D style of gameplay since it's on the Game Boy Advance. It was a little strange to play this one after getting used to F-Zero X, since a lot of the new changes aren't here anymore. Tracks are back to having 5 laps instead of 3, which was kind of disappointing to me as I had grown accustomed to the more instant and fast-paced style of gameplay from X. The detailed character profiles are gone, and there's a lot less machines to choose from, but I suppose it's all understandable considering the power of the console it's on. This game is more of a sequel to the original, with about the same amount of content as the SNES game. The main attraction is the Grand Prix mode, but there are a couple side modes to enjoy too. The visuals look really nice in this game, and every track has great theming. I also love the more classic sounding music. It's such a great style that fits F-Zero songs really well. At first I had a really hard time controlling this game. The machines seemed way too slippery, and I ended up bouncing between barriers a lot. But after a bit of practice I discovered a technique that works pretty well where you basically just spam both the acceleration and slide buttons when going around corners. This solved most of my handling problems, but it does mean this game became pretty uncomfortable to play after a while. One thing I really didn't like though, is that when you're at really low health, your machine loses almost all of its speed. Maybe I was just doing something wrong, but this felt like a pretty strange choice as this series is usually so rewarding for taking big risks. The tracks also felt a little claustrophobic at times, like the machines were just a little too big for the courses. But I still enjoyed my time with this game, and it's a really solid entry for being the first F-Zero on a handheld system. Everything that's great about these games, the sense of speed, the difficult but rewarding controls, and the amazing track designs and soundtrack are all here, crammed onto this tiny console. After playing this game, it was clear that the 2D and 3D F-Zero games are pretty different, just like Mario, Metroid, or Zelda games. The 2D games rely on more small, precise inputs, where the 3D games give you a lot more room for mistakes and improvising. I enjoy both styles a lot, even though I probably prefer the 3D format a bit more. 
Lucky for me, the next game in the series would be the big, fancy follow-up to F-Zero X, and would end up being the high point of the entire series as a whole. F-Zero GX is an absolutely massive upgrade on what came before in every way possible. This sort of incredible jump up in graphics and fidelity was only really possible during this time in gaming history, when every new console generation felt like a whole new world of possibilities. Obviously GX is a spiritual sequel to F-Zero X from the N64, and it's hard to believe these games are just under 5 years apart. The models, courses, music, and modes are all hugely improved, to the point where it still looks impressive today. This is truly the peak of the series when it comes to visuals and overall presentation. It's tough to know where to begin with this one, but I guess I'll start with the full-on story mode missions, complete with cutscenes and everything. I think this is such a fantastic addition, as it finally gives the player a reason to meaningfully engage with the gameplay. In all the previous F-Zero games, your only real motivation is to get better and get first in all the Grand Prix, but now there are 9 story chapters to play through. Each mission is fairly short, with charming cutscenes to play before and after. The twist is that these story missions are surprisingly difficult. It really caught me off guard at first, and it quickly forced me to learn the controls and get used to the new style of handling. The controls are even more touchy and precise, so I made a lot of mistakes starting out. To successfully beat some of these story chapters, you basically have to play perfectly. But over time I actually grew to like this, as it gives you a reason to have to get better at the game. The story missions also don't unlock normally, you have to purchase them from the shop, and you'll need to play the normal Grand Prix mode to have enough tickets to buy every new chapter. The way this is set up means you can't really speed through the story chapters in one sitting, and instead have to bounce between playing the story and improving your skills in the Grand Prix races. I thought this was a great balance, and I actually enjoyed this approach to unlocking the next chapter. It's also awesome how most of the story chapters have their own unique tracks and gimmicks, instead of just reusing the normal courses. The story cutscenes are very weird, but also charming. Some of these animations are just plain strange, but I can't say it wasn't entertaining. There's also some surprisingly great world building at times, pulling me right into the world of F-Zero. It's so cool to see this world brought to life with these animated moments, and it really highlights the potential of this universe. I absolutely loved the story mode of GX. It feels like the next big step for the series as a whole, and I had a blast playing through it. The actual gameplay of this game is phenomenal, with simply incredible track designs and super memorable characters. Basically every single course in this game is a 10 out of 10, both visually and mechanically. Not only are they super fun to race on, but they look stunning. My favorite part of playing this game for the first time was experiencing the courses for the first time. There's a very unique kind of fear when you're speeding down a track and you don't know what's around the next corner. It felt truly thrilling. The 3D style of F-Zero gameplay has been perfected here. The sense of speed is indescribable and has to be experienced firsthand. The basic structure of F-Zero X returns, but it's even better. Boosting, turning, tilting, spin attacking, and flying through the air all feel terrific. This has got to be one of the most satisfying Nintendo games to control, despite the high skill barrier, or rather, because of it. I really got into memorizing each track and refining my reflexes to near perfection in order to win consistently. And once you finally get to that point, there's nothing else quite like it. I feel like this would have been the point in the series where they started adding in items or other more casual style things, but I'm so glad they stuck to the pure skill-based gameplay, even though it's brutal at times, because it's overcoming that difficulty that makes the game so much fun. The music is fantastic as always, but feels even better than usual. When that music kicks in at the right time, it's the perfect motivator pushing you to go even faster and harder with your driving. Every single character gets their own music theme, which is such an extra layer of effort that I love so much. This game made me realize that the level of work and attention to detail put into all the racers feels more like a fighting game like Street Fighter than a typical racing game. 
It's such an interesting angle that feels super distinct and hasn't been replicated since, at least not to the same level. This game is just packed full of personality and content, whether it's the charming post-victory interviews or the in-depth machine creator that lets you build your very own vehicle. Playing this game is an absolute joy, and it's quickly become not only one of my favorite racing games of all time, but one of my favorite Nintendo games in general. I absolutely understand the strong passion the fanbase has for this series after falling in love with F-Zero GX, and it was easily the high point of my entire journey. I look forward to continuing to enjoy it for long into the future, as I feel like I've just barely scratched the surface of this one. F-Zero GP Legend is the second entry on the Game Boy Advance, but this one feels a lot more refined than Maximum Velocity did. The graphics have taken a more stylized approach that I think looks much better, and the handling has been made more responsive as well. This game is a tie-in game with the anime, which I had never even heard of before. Just like GX, this game actually comes with a full-on story mode, with plenty of missions to complete. There are lots of different characters that you get to play as, with each one having their own little mini-story with unique challenges. Obviously, it's not as high budget or impressive as the story chapters from GX, but I think this structure is actually stronger. Being able to experience multiple different side stories with all the different characters just fits this world perfectly, and I really liked how the stories themselves weave in and out of each other constantly. I love this planet map screen, and the planet overviews were really great as well, giving some nice context for each of the locations. Of course, there's also the standard Grand Prix mode, but there's also time attack, training, and zero test modes too. There's also tons of machines to unlock, way more than the previous Game Boy Advance entry. This game is packed full of content, and I really enjoyed my time with it. I did have some trouble readjusting to the 2D style of gameplay and controls since I spent so much time with GX, and switching between 2D and 3D was finally starting to mess with my reflexes. Thanks to the improved graphics, story mode, and huge amount of content, I think this is the best handheld F-Zero game, and was actually the final one released here in the West. But there was a direct sequel to this game titled F-Zero Climax that was only released in Japan. I played this one for a while as well, and it does actually have some significant differences. They added in the spin attack from the 3D games for the first time in a 2D entry, and it fits perfectly. Boosting is more flashy, and you can actually do this powerful boost and spin move that's super fun to pull off. But they got rid of the little sparks that show up when tilting, which is a shame as I really liked that detail. The controls seem to be refined even more, but for the most part it's pretty similar to how it was in the previous game. You'd think I'd be sick of seeing the same planets and locations by this point, but I weirdly still really enjoyed seeing every game's new take on them. Hearing the many different remixes of the same themes was great as well. I don't think I'll ever get sick of hearing new versions of Big Blue. Climax doesn't have a full story mode, but there are some challenge levels in survival mode that unlock short little text boxes that seem to have light story details. There's also a super in-depth and complex level editor that I didn't really get into myself, but it's a really cool offering. I think this game is actually more fun to play than its predecessor thanks to the added spin move and a stronger soundtrack, but I do really miss the fully fleshed out story mode. If only the best parts of GP Legend and Climax could be combined together, then we'd have the definitive 2D F-Zero game. And finally, there's the most recent release, F-Zero 99. Now this isn't really a full mainline entry into the series, but I think it does enough to be considered as one. It's the first time online multiplayer gameplay has been brought into the series, and it works flawlessly. Being able to play against other real players does so much for the replayability, and it feels like the final evolution of what F-Zero has always wanted to be. The stakes and energy are super high, and crashing means you're out of the race for good. Racing against CPU opponents is lots of fun in the previous games, but nothing beats racing against other humans. As I mentioned in the intro, I didn't think I would really enjoy this game all that much at first, but I knew I wanted to win at least once, and for a moment I thought I did. After around two hours of playing, I was the first one to cross the finish line, but somehow I was awarded second place instead of first. I'm sure this was just a network error or something, but this lit a fire under me and basically forced me to keep playing until I could win for real. It took many more hours of playing, and I had to get better and better until I could finally win. And once I did, I was planning on putting the game down for good. But to my surprise, I just started up another race. 
and I've been playing consistently ever since. There's some great customization options you unlock as you play, and there's even a few side modes like team battle, playing on pro tracks, and entering Grand Prix. And this game will continue to get updates, adding in new content every now and then. It's unclear if they'll stop once all the originals content is added, or if they'll maybe start adding totally new courses. Personally, I'm hoping for an offline side mode where you can race against CPU opponents just like in the original, as there isn't any single player content currently aside from practice mode. Obviously, I really like this game, as it's what pushed me to dive into the series and make this video. Going back to it after playing all the others though, it does feel a bit slow paced. I think they made everything a bit slower to try and make it less chaotic since there's 98 other players, which makes sense. The new Skyrail system is super creative though, and fits right into the series as a great evolution of the core gameplay. One thing I really appreciate now is how far you can see into the distance, as in all the older 2D F-Zero games it feels like you can only see a few feet in front of you at once. The classic pixel art has been cleaned up really nicely, and the overall presentation is great. I'm so glad this game was made because it brought F-Zero back into the public spotlight, and hopefully it pushes people to go back and check out the older games like it did for me. And that's pretty much every single F-Zero game and all my thoughts on them. I know there are some exceptions, like I didn't play any of the expansion packs or the arcade game F-Zero AX, but I think I covered the majority of what this series offers. This video was kind of just my general thoughts on each game, and hopefully you enjoyed listening to me ramble on about them. It took me a while to adjust to each one of these games' unique style of difficulty, but rising to the challenge was really enjoyable. If I had to rank them in terms of my personal favorites, I think for me it would be Maximum Velocity on the bottom, then the original on SNES, Climax, GP Legend, F-099, X, and of course GX at the very top. I'm sure my list will continue to change and evolve over time, as I literally played all of these games for the first time over the past month, but I can assure you that GX will always be at the top. Honestly, it's pretty difficult to rank these games as they're all really good, and none of them stand out as being the clear weakest, which is the sign of a truly great series. Obviously, I just got a pretty surface level understanding of all of these games, and I look forward to playing them more in the future and really learning every small aspect of each one that makes them different. F-Zero is one of those game franchises that often gets thrown around every time a Direct happens, but now that I've actually played them for myself, I can fully understand why people want another one so badly. Of course I want another one too, but I also think it's important to slow down and appreciate the fantastic games from the past that are just waiting to be played and enjoyed again. I'd love to see a full return from this series with a GX style 3D game with even more gorgeous graphics and online play, but I also think people should go back and play the older games in order to truly appreciate this series as a whole. I'm sure glad I did. Let me know all of your thoughts on the F-Zero franchise down in the comments, whether you're a longtime fan or have never played any of them. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see ya in the next one.